just a quick right. message. Please like, yeah. subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss another video. So this let's helps this bring brand that awareness to the channel as well as all Forex Shark related projects. Let's Thank just you. go ahead and jump right in. So let me introduce myself. My name is Kryptonite from Up to Wealth. And every Wednesday, right around this time, we host a Twitter space on the best, if we could debate that, the best ecosystem in all of DeFi. We cover the Drip Network and the Animal Farm. And each week we're joined with, if we can, very special guests and then the staples in the crew. So, so far on Twitter spaces, we've got Mike the Cuban, Rock Ape, and Crypto Mark. And our special guest for this week is Trip Coach from Drip and Animal Farm for Poverty. All right. So our agenda, very singular. We're here for you. Just keep that in mind. Our highest priority is to answer your questions and to keep you updated on the latest developments and talk about the macro issues in the crypto market and then how those external implications kind of impact our ecosystem. All right. So again, as we engage in this conversation, we want you guys to tap in. So go ahead and send emojis, share the space with your followers. And again, if you're feeling brave enough, at the bottom left of your screen, I believe there's a button that will allow you to request to speak. If you have insights or a question, we'll open it up for discussion. All right, because again, this is for you. So it's not really us in a format where we're intending to lecture to you. We're here having an open conversation, the stuff that we talk about behind closed doors, the same types of questions that you guys are discussing amongst you, yourselves in these small groups, we're having them too. But we want to open up the platform to you so we can discuss it live. All right. So if we're all aligned, let me start with this because we jumped in, but I want to give our special guest an opportunity that strip coach to kind of introduce himself, especially since this is his first time on Twitter spaces. Trip coach, you okay with that? Yeah, sure. No problem. Awesome. All right, guys, thanks for having me and inviting me to this. Yes, my first time actually attending most events uh, in crypto period, but especially hey. the network and animal farm tend to be and we uh, got <laughs> opposite, opposite uh, time zone for me. So it's not too early. It's only 6 a.m. over here down in Cambodia. But uh, yeah, I've been in drip now since around January of this year, followed it since like November of last year and thought it was one of those other pump and dump scams and sat on the sidelines and basically got in right after all time high and then decided, hey, I'll record my journey like everybody else, see what happens, start digging into it and researching Forex, went all the way through his Discord, read all his uh, chats and stuff like that, and then just decided, all right, he's actually a legitimate developer in this space. So yeah. let me go ahead and uh, put some work in and share my knowledge and uh, kind of keep tabs on what's going on in the space. Excellent. Now, how long have you... Uh been in cryptocurrency because we could talk about how long you've been in trip but how long have you been in crypto and then oh shit uh in crypto ironically <laughs> i got introduced to it around uh, 2012 where i was actually mining bitcoin on some old uh servers in the military i was in uh, it in the military and then uh we lost those so i'm not rich i'm still broke <laughs> but um <laughs> that was my first introduction in it hearing about it and then Sat on the sidelines till about 2018, purchased some Bitcoin again, um, forgot about it again, and they really got back in during the uh, NFT craze uh, end of 2020, uh, right around there. Excellent. Excellent. And then obviously you've been in trip. Were you there for day one or a few months? Uh, no, nah, nah, I missed all that. So I heard about it um, around uh, November of last year and then didn't buy in until february late late january early february okay of 20 uh of 22 this year, yeah, this year. Yeah, yeah. okay we may have bought the same day <laughs> maybe <laughs> so let's do this all right so let's do this guys so um clearly we had a major event that took place today that was the first official trip ama right before we actually peel the onion back, I'm gonna ask you guys to do me one small favor. It's probably gonna challenge you for a moment, but it's a small favor. I want you guys to give me your initial thoughts in 10 words or less 
without using the word bullish. <laughs> <laughs> Initial thoughts, 10 words or less, and you can't use the word bullish. And I'm going to buy you some time because I know what you're doing. You're probably coming up with what you want to say, and then you're counting on your fingers to make sure it's 10 words or less. All right, so I'll I'll buy you some time. <laughs> So here's why I'm saying let's not use bullish only because bullish, it becomes like a knee jerk response and it almost loses its impact. And I think that the drip ecosystem and our community is very unique. And uh, I want to separate ourselves just on this call and come up with another word that doesn't necessarily fall flat because we all use it in 10 words or less, just your initial thoughts without using bullish. And then we'll take everybody's points you kind of dig into it well for me i mean electrified like i said earlier yeah. uh, super super confident um yeah. and incredibly excited okay i like that who else you want to take a stab rock okay. for, for me i thought this community has unbridled potential yeah and forex is just another part of that community Mm -hmm. Perfect. I could rock with that. Good coach, you want to try to take a stab at that? <laughs> yeah, mine's easy. I was, I haven't listened to it yet. I was okay. still asleep. That's my 10 words. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. No problem. No problem. Good. All right. Makes sense at the 6 a.m. for you right now. I love it. And and for me, um, the, the key word for me is optimistic. Yeah, that's the the first word that came to mind was Ooh, optimistic. Yeah, that's yeah. a good one. And uh, only because um, the short story is there was just some concern across a few individuals that Forex Shark had lost sight of the drip network and that it wasn't getting the attention that it deserved, especially with the most recent price in action. So everyone was concerned about the future of drip. And when he came on and provided some reassurance, and we can get into it as we as we talk more about specifics, when he came on and provided some level of reassurance, you can't help but leave optimistic about the future. Now, the future, in my opinion, isn't next week. We're talking about months and maybe years to come. That's where the optimism kind of sets in. So it just kind of isn't that why it's so good? Emotions down. Say that again, Rocket. I said, isn't that why it's so good? Like for one, yes. there's a project that you can look back or look forward years, months, yes. whatever. Yes. Because that's the goal is sustainability, right? Yeah. If we have a two dollar drip for five years, there's not going to be a single person complaining. No. I agree. And I want to get into that too, because uh, the price is on someone's mind. So we'll make sure we come back and talk about the pricing on there. So let me guys ask you this. So now that we've kind of given the raw emotions, what was one of the key takeaways from today's call? I made, I made myself a little list as he was doing this AMA of like every single point that I was like, man, that's awesome. Oh man, he said that. <laughs> yes, this is good. So, I mean, one of the first things that, that struck me was the fact that, first of all, Animal Farm, like everybody thinks that, you know, um, he created Drip as a standalone thing and then he created Animal Farm as a standalone thing. And it's the exact opposite. He built Animal Farm specifically for Drip. Mm -hmm. And the reason why he did this is because early in the days of Drip, uh, maybe about five or six months after release, everybody in Drip kind of got a little taste of what it would be like to be in a farm utilizing the Drip token when the first bee farms came out. Okay. And it was just a, a very small little farm. It you know, it, it definitely pumped the price, uh, pumped the price, I think 50 or 60% at that time. And then it just, you know, their liquidity wore out and then that was it. But ever since that moment, Forex knew that if he really wanted to benefit drip, 
he would have to be in control of the farm. He would have to formulate the perfect farm to utilize drip tokens. And that's what Manor Farm V1 was. And that is what Animal Farm now is, is yeah. the perfect utility for drip. So I have, since that, since that first um, Animal Farm launch, now just a few weeks ago, I have just been dying for him to talk about doing the drip to animal farm tax free without adding cell pressure okay that that is a huge huge thing for me because right now the only way to really get into drip if you're not very crypto savvy the easiest way would be just to sell your drip for busd and then use busd in the drip liberation contract and then that spews out the the lps the drip busd lps but to do that, you have to sell your drip. Yes. So it's kind of putting sell pressure on drip, even though it's still staying in the ecosystem, that sell pressure is does have a negative effect on price. Even, even though it's minimal, it still affects it. So right. having, having the ability to transfer your drip straight from your faucet into the animal farm without adding cell pressure and also being tax free is absolutely massive <laughs> and i don't think people are really going to understand how massive that is until it's implemented and you see everybody rushing to move their drip over to the animal farm without creating cell pressure you know uh, right now we're, we're feeling that cell pressure because that's the totally. only way to get in totally. so that was a huge thing for me um, another really big thing was the fact that he mentioned you'd be able to do new pairings with Drip. Yeah, that was pretty slick. New LPs. Yeah. So this is Drip and Animal Farm uh, Pigs and Animal Farm Dog LPs. Holy mm -hmm. smokes. I agree. Even more, even more things, even more utility that you can do with Drip now. And there was another thing that he mentioned right under that, that I'd, I'm not sure if anybody else caught this, but he said that he would never create another quote unquote speculative token. In yeah, but what future. did he mean by that, Mike? Like, what did he so, interpret that to me? So, yeah. so when he said some can read between the lines, to yeah. me, speculative means the price can go up and the price can go down. Yeah. If it's not a speculative token, that would mean to me that he's going to create a stable coin. Understood. Okay. Okay. So that is incredibly bullish because there is no better person to formulate a well done stable coin than this man right here. I mean, Understood. he has all of the makings of someone who'd be able to truly create an actual stable, stable coin, you know, something that could, could potentially be equally as effective as BUSD, which in my opinion is the absolute best stable coin right now on the market. Yeah. Um, another thing he mentioned was the drip on ramp, which everybody's been talking about already for you know a few months, but he threw in a little teaser for a drip off ramp. Yes. Which is huge because there are so, a lot of newbies that just, you know, are very confused by all these crypto things. Oh, I have to have a blockchain wallet. I have to have an exchange. Oh, I have to connect the exchange to my bank. What do I do? There's so many odds and ends that people can kind of get lost in the thing. So making an easy drip on ramp and a drip off ramp, super bullish super bullish right there he's really just been focused on an arm wrap so is he intentional by not really specifying both on and off until today because that still seems confusing for yes. a lot of people you know okay i, I mean i think i think it was you know because he's kind of had the idea but he just didn't know how to implement it exactly yeah. mm -hmm. but I, in my opinion what i think he may do is drip on ramp you buy with a credit card drip off ramp would pr most likely be with a preloaded debit card. You know, a debit card that you can load directly from your MetaMask without the need for a third party, without the need for a bank. Yeah. That, that to me would be the only way it would make sense because if you still need a bank, then, you know, what's the point of all this decentralization talk? Gotcha. So that that's my opinion on that. Um, I really, really enjoyed that he went a little because my I don't know if you guys submitted any questions to Forex, but I yeah. did. Okay. And my my question was specifically because I'm in the Telegram like 
24 seven. I mean, I'm in there as much as I possibly can helping people, educating people. One of the biggest problems right now is newbies getting their wallets compromised. I mean, I can't, so I can't Mike, what say is, that? That. Is, it, is it people are giving up their keys or is it something a little more technical so, than that? No, it's not technical. It's super yeah. dumb. It's okay. completely, it's a complete dumb thing yeah. that people are just uneducated on how to get, how they can get hacked and yeah. how they can be safe from these hacks. People don't yeah. know. So in Telegram, um, the moment you ask a question, I need help with my men mask. Oh, I can't make a deposit. Oh, I can't hydrate. Oh, what's going on with my wallet? If you say any of that, dude, scammers are on your DMs like white on rice, dude. Yes. In mm -hmm. Instantaneously. And I don't blame, you know, the newbies. They don't know any better. They've probably just gotten onto Telegram to ask this question. And yeah. then within moments, they're going to get a message or a call even from someone whose name is drip admin yeah so they you know will just go ahead and give this person all of their information and the only thing you need from someone's wallet not even their seed phrase there is something called the seed key okay the seed key gives everybody full access to your wallet so they will either click on a link or they will make them go to a site that allows them to connect their wallet to this and the moment they do that it will send a scan through your phone and if you have your um your passphrase on your phone in a notepad in an email if you took a picture of it and saved it on your phone this information will instantly be retrieved from whatever code they sent and they will have your passphrase instantly mm -hmm. gotcha or they will trick them into going into their MetaMask wallet, then going over to their seed, seed key, and then copying their seed key and pasting their seed key. And the moment you do that, that person now has full access to their wallet. Okay. So these things are happening every single day, 24 seven. I, I mean, I've, I've said it a lot of times in the telegram, Drip is the scammers number one product. I mean, mm -hmm. they, because Drip is so awesome and because, you know, not only is it awesome getting 365% on your own money, mm -hmm. imagine getting 365% on someone <laughs> else's money. You know, that's even right. better. So to your so, point, that's where it goes back to the education, right? Which is right. The education. Yes. Yeah. Which he kind of touched on, you know, yeah. and that is, that is the number one best protection is education. Totally. Yes. But he did mention that he was working on the insurance protocol, yes. which in, in a very nutshell version, what he said is you can start your one wallet and then for a small fee, you'd also be able to insure a second faucet that mm -hmm. would build simultaneously with your first faucet. And then if that wallet were ever to become compromised, through the insurance protocol, that first compromised wallet would be blacklisted and then the funds in your insured wallet would be salvaged. Okay. So you wouldn't necessarily get your full, you know, faucet back exactly the way it was, but having something, you know, let's say maybe 30 to 50% of it salvaged is definitely better than nothing. I agree. I totally agree. Hey, and Drip Coach, because I know you're sitting back and you mentioned earlier that you didn't take in the AMA. If it's okay with you, I'm actually going to probably um, go to one other speaker once Mike wraps up. And then I do want to get your thoughts on a couple of key points. And I can play it back uh, if necessary, what Mike is kind of saying. But I just want yeah, you yeah, to no focus problem. on it. I appreciate that. Yep, awesome. Yep, all good. Okay, Mike. Yeah, before we got too far, I just wanted to uh, get Drip Coach caught up. Uh, yeah, no problem, no problem. The the last point that I have on my little bulletin board here is the fact that Forex's interview with Bloomberg is coming out soon. And yeah. that is really, really exciting. I mean, Bloomberg is a very large establishment. It's very yeah. well respected in yeah. the financial markets. So the fact that he is speaking specifically on decentralization is going to be huge for both Drip and animal farm so I'm, I'm super excited when that comes out so so let's stay there before i get uh i think rocky had something to say so let's stay there for a second because as i think about um 
Bloomberg, now we're talking more specifically traditional markets. So maybe folks that are aware of cryptocurrency, right? Emphasis on the word of cryptocurrency. So retail stuff you could potentially get on Coinbase, crypto.com, Binance. How does that translate down to DeFi? Because there's a bunch of bridges you've got to cross to get from traditional all the way to DeFi. So do you think that's good for us? And do we see the impact of that relatively soon? Or are we just kind of planting seeds and we're talking two to three years down the road? How do you see that playing out? I mean, I think right now, if you were to tell someone who doesn't know anything about crypto, they're not really going to um, adhere to whether something is centralized or, or decentralized. You know, it's not going to matter. Those words to them have, you know, have no um, have no power behind them okay. because gotcha. they don't understand the difference. Mm -hmm. So right now, crypto is kind of in this big this big this big bath water you know and it's just F mixing in all of these different aspects from all of these different financial markets ftx to bitcoin is no there's no difference to some people who don't know what crypto is so explaining the difference between centralization which in, in a very nutshell way centralization is you do not have control of your money the bank does decentralization is you have full control of your money that's okay. like the easiest way to explain it to a lot of people yep. so animal farm and drip are both decentralized assets and once the division once the clarity starts to trickle down to people who have put all of crypto into this one big pot and people start understanding oh wait a second ftx was centralized and they went down but all of these decentralized platforms are still up and running with no problem there's something there. There's a difference there. You know, they're not all the same. Oh. So I think once that that understanding um, is taken on by more people of the general public, I think it's going to be an incredibly positive thing for mm -hmm. all of DeFi. Gotcha. And you trust Forex with that message? Or do you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's, there's nobody. The yeah. Well, there's nobody better to talk about decent decentralization than forex i mean right he he can go on and on and on about it and we've heard it on all of his amas the three four hour amas where <laughs> he's talked about nothing but bitcoin and decentralization so i think he's a great candidate to get the word out there to the public excellent excellent all right we've got mo tapped into okay drip coach there was a lot to take in there did anything stand out to you that uh, Mike talked about? Yeah, I know he's mentioned the, the fiat on-ramp and uh, now specifically in this AMA talking about an off-ramp that is definitely pointing in the right direction as far as uh, onboarding new people and making it simple. And also regarding the um, TradFi uh, articles like with Bloomberg and Yahoo Finance and all that stuff. The, the big thing I see is that these are all Kind of what you just said i think it's all planting seeds so i don't actually see any of this and i try to put this on my channel see this shaping up any sort of way in the short to near term like this is right now literally either the final leg down or we got one more with this genesis uh backing from ftx so all that means is that we're just going to be down here treading water um yeah. until uh things shape up in the macro and we get a pivot basically from the fed and all this other stuff or maybe the stable coin the transparency act comes in something there will be an there will need to be another catalyst before people start to filter all the way down from bitcoin to ethereum to DeFi to bnb uh, you know and all the way to us so mm -hmm. i see these as being great seeds planted but um, don't want to give the false hopium that, oh shit, all of a sudden we're going back to, you know, all time highs in the short, even six months. Um, I see this as like you said before, maybe like a year, two, three years, something like that. Way, mm -hmm. way out there. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. And that's good. And that's good insight too. Okay. So here's what, um, is important to me, which is why we have so many different speakers. Cause everyone has, uh, very different backgrounds, very different education, very different points of view. And that's important, right? Because that's the makeup of our community. And that's why it's necessary that we have such broad spectrums of thought on here so that people can take away quite a bit of different variables and nuggets and make informed decisions about how they invest within our ecosystem and in cryptocurrency in general. 
So that's why I like a little compare and contrast. That stuff is important, right? So let's do this. Let me see if I've got um, Mo. Mo, are you there? Hell yeah, I'm here. What's up? Mo, let's do this. Let's do this. <laughs> uh, let's start over. Um, I asked our core group if they could summarize their thoughts in 10 words or less the very first drip AMA. But here's the key takeaway. You cannot use the word bullish. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, you can't use bullish. Because that shit kind of falls flat every once in a while because everyone just kind of <laughs> knee jerk throws it out there. And I just want us to come up with a different adjective just on today's Twitter spaces to kind of describe what your thoughts were. It could be an emotion. It could be something else. I don't care. Just 10 words or less without using okay. the word bullish. And then okay. we'll jump into your points. Okay, perfect. So um, in a nutshell, I feel, I feel good and I feel like we're headed in the right direction. Yeah. Okay. So essentially, um, I've mentioned this in my video this morning. I think that what we're doing right now is, is, um, is a great start and yeah. we're, we're doing something that a lot of the community members actually wanted for a long time. They wanted to know that Forex has not given up on drip. They wanted to know that he has things planned. Yes. And he's mentioned it here and there that he's working on the animal farm, mostly because it's the brand new project and he's not forgotten about Drip, but slowly he's going to start allocating different parts of the marketing, different parts of the team to separate projects individually, right? So for me, the fact that he's done a specific EMA tailored towards Drip gives a bit more of a um, positive reinforcement to the entire community that Forex is still there. He knows what's going on. He knows that everybody's, you know, looking at the charts 24 seven and seeing the price just drop day after day after day, not knowing what the hell is going on. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's just like Drip Coach said, he's planting the seeds for a lot of these things. It's helping in the short term, like the, the, the price, um, price action in a like in the in the in the direct short term it's helping yeah. a little bit but yeah. um i think we're gonna stay here probably probably go down a bit more mm -hmm. unless he keeps that momentum going for a longer period of time agreed yeah i tend to agree too i tend to agree now can you can you elaborate why you think the price action may be short term right so none of us know for sure but can yeah. you elaborate on why you think it may be short lived okay that's a good question so i think i think right now there's like because okay so let me let me you know uh, go back a little bit i know mike yeah. mentioned that you know the the articles um, right now uh, it's it's actually a good thing you know they're they're pushing out these articles and uh, uh, bloomberg for example uh, differentiating between decentralized and centralized markets but I feel like for all the newbies that are in the market right now, um, they might not know the difference and learning about it in a market that's very bloody might mm -hmm. not encourage them to learn more. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just the fact that they're first of all, learning about something new in a market that's not looking as healthy, if they're not educated enough, they're not going to make that extra step or extra effort to learn more yeah therefore not a lot of money is going to start pouring in out of nowhere right mm -hmm. so i'm thinking he's laying the, the bricks slowly he's you know doing things here and there he's showing that you know he's back in business he's a bit more organized he has a better team you know better launches and whatnot and slowly once they see that everything you know is back like it used to be then they're going to start, you know, trusting him a bit more, trusting that the projects are not dead. You know, yeah. that this is the best DeFi project that has been paying out money in like for the longest time. And mm -hmm. that's when we're going to see a lot more positive momentum in a longer period of time. You know, when more projects are going to be launched uh, in the next few months. Yes. Yes. Anybody else want to elaborate on that? I think that maybe falls kind of in line with uh, what Drip Coach is saying. And I think Mike 
may have an, an opposing opinion or something like that? No, not at all. I mean, I okay. think that uh, slow, slow and steady is is Forex's motto. Uh, you know, exactly. nothing. Yes. Nothing is supposed to happen overnight. He has said it, you know, countless times to just be patient, allow the system to work, allow yes. the mechanics to do their thing, allow the gears to turn as they will. And it's a long term project, you know, so mm -hmm. that's why I, I enjoyed when he said that um, before he did the AMA, he said, guys, now is the time to load up on cheap drip because once we do start, you know, laying out all of these launch dates and we start doing all this development and we start, you know, pushing out the advertisements, that is, it's going to pump the price. It's going yeah. to create that excitement and then the price is going to start going up. So now is the time to just load up with what you can before that happens. Yeah. That's and it's funny too. And, and it, it's just weird how it happens because FOMO is truly an actual concept. Isn't it 100%. weird how when you have hints of good news with some clarity and transparency, money just pops up out of nowhere. So to me, there definitely is money sitting on the sidelines. So that's encouraging, right? Because we always yeah. get this spike. So if can you imagine if something is delivered on time consistently with flawless execution, I also believe that more and more money would appear. Because in the short term, we're talking about in less than 72 hours, we went from a sub $2 price to over two bucks, just on hints of good news. So there's money on the yeah. sidelines, right? There's definitely money on the sidelines. Yeah, definitely. I, I feel the exact same way. I feel like, you know, once once they see how the projects are going to be, you know, because he said it multiple times as well that he has a lot of projects lined up and he's going to start pumping them out one by one. If yeah. he actually um, organizes it in a, in a way that is timed well and, uh, and launches on time and whatnot, just like he said in the AMA today, then yeah. I feel like that money on the sidelines or that drip in their wallets or whatever it is, is going to start pouring back in. And just like oh. you said, a lot of these people know about the, the ecosystem. They know about the animal farm. They know about Drip Network. They're just waiting to make sure nothing is going to go, you know, and destroy the whole thing. Especially now, not a lot of DeFi projects are actually, you know, surviving this stupid bear market. So they're yeah, just waiting. They don't want to lose their money, you know, and, yeah. and they have all the rights to do so, you know. Totally. Hey, what's going on? Okay, who's that? This is okay. Gary. Hey, Gary, how you doing? Me... Sir? Good. Hey, Gary. see me in your comments and what up? <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Uh, I just want to say he was speaking in the DJ protocol about the F project that effed itself. Um, and he said something really interesting. I think it speaks to Forex. He said he really expects people to know more than they do. Hmm. He knows he's brilliant. He knows he's he's dedicated, but it's been tough for him to find that level of just like with BB, it was only him and BB. Yeah. And when they had maybe 25 to 30,000 people up till they had to re release the Elma Farm because of the front run of the pigs. And then BB ghosted on him. He apparently had COVID or something at the time, but yeah. he had nobody. So everybody in the community, you have to know how to put things in context. He's out there fighting alone. Like he's probably telling BB, we need to step it up. It's just us now. We have to work 24 hours a day. We have to get this animal farm fixed. Yeah. And then he ran into a couple times where you have to restructure the entire team as, as he's honestly told us at 80% through or some devs that just couldn't hack it. He had to get get rid of a couple. So every time he has to go back to the drawing board because he can't find people with the same dedication. Not saying he's mighty leader and all, he's, but he's obviously driven. He's he's altruistic and he's a, he's a smart guy. He's got game theory down. And I think him saying that I just expect you guys to know, it's like he just lays it out in front of us. And he, well, Animal Farm is easy. Look at it. I give you all the tools. It's a cycle. It's a loop. Put your money in. Make it work. Why isn't everybody doing this? 
Yeah. He's just sitting there with his hands up like, I don't understand. <laughs> it's working beautifully. Totally. Put your money I in can there. imagine that Get it must money. be really frustrating being Forex, you know, having this this kind of level of, of intellect and this level of mathematics and science and chemistry. Because, you know, he was actually studying to be a chemistry major in, in school before he decided to be a dev. So one of the biggest things in chemistry you need is problem solving. So he has this incredible skill for problem solving that is just unmatched you know by anybody else on his team yes very much so, so. He, he's super smart and i think just the whole people everybody doesn't put it in context he's very frustrated because he's like i have this in my head i know exactly how to do it i just can't code 150 hours a day i can't do it <laughs> you know gary you're, and you're he can't find people to, right. to come up with his game in that so when Which he says good. you know yeah. this is coming out 100 percent october 18th We'll do a month of marketing. We've got it set. We're ready to go. And launch fails because of, you know, BB had the, well, supposedly had other things under the con. But he just didn't have enough people. He just, he thinks he, too much of himself and he just puts too much on his back as, as we've all done. And like, yeah, I can meet that deadline at work. I can do this project or this paper at, at college school and, and set amount of time. But we just yeah. overextend ourselves and that's all he's done. He's not really lied or made false promises. He's, He's just biting off more than he can chew because he's sure of himself. And that's fine, but, you know, it looks bad to a lot of people. Yeah, it's the, it's the perception, right? Because what do they say? Uh, perception is the reality. So it is kind of tough when, you know, you, you get into a habit where you miss deadlines. And we can all agree because we're all adults and we understand how important you honoring your commitments, you're meeting your timelines, especially in business. And then this is a high stakes game because we're talking about people's money. So it's, it's really important to kind of stick to your timelines. But to your point, none of us, I don't think, can really understand the pressure that he's under with, you know, a half cocked team. So that's why I think it's great news that they are building a drip specific team with like three or four people just to focus on drip. Like that's insane. And, and I would tell you this, just kind of being someone um, in real estate and kind of building single family homes and commercial properties, like your team is critical. And the worst thing to do as a new team is to come in and try to rework someone else's project, right? So think about all the new people that had to come in and potentially work on the animal farm and drip when somebody else had their hands in it and they did things and they set things up that were important and specific to how they like to work. And you don't at all agree with that and understand the logic. So now you've got to start all over and that takes tons of time. But now you start with a clean slate, a fresh team of three to four people just focused on trip. Can you imagine how much faster things will get delivered? So there's more confidence in him committing to a timeline and delivering on time. And and he's addressed that, you know, he's addressed that he understands how important it is to his next uh, launches in the future, that they be on time, that they be scheduled, that they be 100%, um, you know, ready to go on launch day. So the fact that he recognizes that that will have a huge impact on sentiment is a really good sign you know he's not he's not ignorant of that he's not above that so he he understands the importance of that so that's definitely really good to have in, in a in a leader or in a lead dev you know for a project like this i agree i totally agree let me do this guys let's see i'm going to take maybe a moment here because we've got some listeners did you guys read uh, what Cloud Money posted in all the chats today? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, elaborate on it. I believe I know what you're talking about. Elaborate on it. Yeah, they had a big stake into the reservoir and they took it out some couple of weeks ago, but now they're going to put back more, 100 more than what they had in, 600 BNB. They're going to put back into the faucet at 21 BNB a day. Yeah. I oh, saw hell that. yeah. Trip coach, did you see that? Not, yeah, it's not the faucet; it's uh, in the reservoir. In the reservoir, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Which, which for me is is actually amazing because it's gonna help push up the price of drip and keep it at a certain level. Six hundred BNB is not anything, right? It's it's gonna be huge for the price appreciation of the next couple of weeks if they actually do that. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, they've committed. They've committed to doing that. And, you know, they they stand by their their word that they are the largest supporter of Drip, that they have a long term vision for Drip as well. And they've committed to being that support, you know, which is huge. But why did they take it out in the first place then? Because they felt that the price was dropping and they recognized that it was going to go lower. So they figured it would be a good time to pull out what they currently had at that price level to then kind of come back in on the uh, what they perceived to be the bottom. Okay, I see. Okay, no, not bad. I'm I'm happy about it. Nevertheless, you know, and you yeah, know, I like kind of bring that up because that might have something to do with the price. It it may stabilize a little higher. We might have a higher low because of that That's, and with this this Furio nonsense. Yep. All absolutely. these other forks just going to hell in a handbasket. And listen, yeah, and that's that's what I wanted to ask Strip Coach. Did you have an opinion on that? Because when I read that this morning in your Telegram, I was kind of curious if um, how much correlation between those reservoir deposits and the AMA. Like, where do you think the price implication came from? Do you think it was the FOMO, or do you think it was the uh, the deposit into the reservoir? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of both. So that was definitely time. I remember reading and being in the cloud money chat when that happened, when they took it out and even did a video on it. And they commented on my video because I was talking about the reservoir and the support and all that. So I didn't yeah. really quite understand why they pulled it out. They, they listed you know, the reasons, but it still didn't make any sense because it's the reservoir. So you don't lose anything. There's You actually get hit on the in and out with taxes. So it actually benefited Drip for them to pull it out. But um, I think in this case, seeing this pump, um, I think it was tied to cloud money posts, maybe some stuff in the Dow, as well as uh, this AMA leading up to this AMA and actually having um, the, the AMA go forward as planned. So people were, I guess, buying in. Also, cloud money mentioned that they're going back in the reservoir, but also onboarding people under their uh, wallet in the faucet. So maybe with their initial buy, they actually also onboarded some other people. I haven't looked at their actual mm -hmm. on-chain wallet, but it all mm -hmm. kind of tied together for sure to, to pop us up from 140 to uh, 210, you know, in about 24, 36 hours, basically. So definitely yeah. something took place that was a major catalyst. So we'll see how this holds up, though. Yeah, that's good. All right, that's good. I like that. All right, so let's, let's do this. Let's do this. I'm going to see for the listeners, and I appreciate you guys tapping in i see jacob i see lovell who else do i see on here i see gas drip maxi welcome you guys who else is on here that i see i see e-money jason todd is always there manny do you guys have anything you want to say if so i believe at the bottom left of your phone there should be an option to request to speak if there's insights or a question you guys want us to address or some insights from today's AMA, tap in and uh, I'll give you guys a couple of seconds to do that. And then if not, we'll just move on to the next subject. So let's get somebody here. What else is on here? Punisher, I see you, my friend. Welcome. I want to make Kano's, Kano's life. Welcome. Okay, let's do this. All right, here we go. We've got one. Lovell. Okay, there we go. Lovell, I just invited you to speak. How are you doing this week? Can you hear me? Lovell, can you hear me? Hopefully I'm pronouncing it right. I think he's muted. Maybe hey, I'm Lovell. Look. Okay, there yeah, you go. This, You're this good LaVale. now. Um, Lavelle, how you doing, my hey, friend? Doing, hey, Lavelle. Pretty good. So I feel Welcome. You're always here. I appreciate the support. Oh, yeah. Always good to listen in on any drip content. I'm feeling pretty good as far as the AMA concern, far as Forex basically saying, hey, we are going to have a dedicated team to drip. For me, that's that's huge, you know, from a development perspective, because you have those resources to, like you mentioned before, to quickly pump out products. But he said something else that was also kind of important too. He says, hey, this is it. We got the the animal farm, we got pigs, we got dogs, but we also, we have drip. And from the sounds of it, it sounds like he's not gonna be making any more type of different coins or anything or tokens or anything like that. So all his time and effort no. is gonna be put into drip, 
and the animal farm. So for me, that's what I wanted to hear. I mean, I was buying yesterday mm-hmm. <clears throat> in anticipation. <laughs> Perfect of, timing. Yeah in, it, yeah. in anticipation of the AMA, I was buying yesterday. So I said, yeah, this is potentially going to move. So I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm optimistic. Sure. I like that. So am I. You and I are aligned. I'm optimistic as well. I think that's the word of the night will be optimistic. Let me ask you guys this. Um, Here's something else I took away because there's always concern about shrimp minting. There's too much circulating supply. So one of the solves that he kind of threw out was maybe a minimum drip deposit, right? Because now you only need one. I don't know if he quantified another option, but it used to be 10. Do you think going back to a minimum of 10 trip is a good option for us? Or should we keep it at one trip minimum? What are you guys' thoughts on that? I mean, uh, if he goes back to 10, that's like uh, 20 bucks, right? It's not. It's not <laughs> you're right. But we're assuming it's not going to stay, but you're right. I, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I think. I think in the long term, it's um, it's gonna help. It's gonna help the the, the contract. I mean, yeah. it's not gonna make a huge difference for somebody who wants to get in, because most people that actually get in that I know of have not started with one drip. They usually start with fifty to a hundred drip as yeah. a starting yeah. point, and you know they they just compound going forward, especially at a low price of drip. If you mm-hmm. can compound one per day, it's actually the best, you know. So. I feel like going back to 10 is um, is going to help to some degree. I just don't know like the correlation between that and the price of drip. I'm, I'm not 100% sure on that. Got it. Drip coach, you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it's definitely something that's needed. So, I mean, that was actually what stopped me initially back in the day from getting in. They had 10 and I think it was... I didn't do my research, uh, but it had already been switched to one, but the yeah. UI still said 10 and it was yeah. at like 50 bucks to 60 bucks. I was like, I ain't got 600 bucks to throw in another damn uh, Ponzi, <laughs> you know, dap. I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait on the sidelines a bit for this. So I think at this stage, um, yeah, bumping the price or bumping the total deposit necessary would definitely be a step in the right direction because that circulating supply, the actual 600, 700,000 we have in there that can actually get reduced uh, a lot quicker and then create that arbitrage between pancake swap and the native deck. So I think it can have a short term, a uh, little bit of appreciation to the price. But I feel also what I said earlier is that most of the people getting in, and I just put this out on a video that comes out later this week. Uh, most people in drip are ones that are already very much aware of it or have been following it for the last couple of months. We're not really bringing in any new external capital. There's not like people coming from you know the crypto streets are actually from tradfi coming into crypto and then coming into to drip it's like you're yeah. being onboarded because you've been following it or you're already in DeFi and then you're hearing about it or you got a friends that are in drip and they told you so there's not a lot that's going to be coming in that's going to make a significant difference but that 10 20 maybe even 30 or whatever make it 25 to start your first drip faucet would be a definite boost and that yeah. would also uh, incentivize maybe team building at this stage as well because totally. um, that would help the team uh, team while it gets started so i think it could be a step in the right direction i agree i like your thoughts on that too anybody else how are we feeling about moving from one to ten drip is that good oh okay i think somebody wants to speak who is this crypto bag travis let's see i believe you are a speaker and you are new. yeah okay, there you go yeah, did uh did Forex say he was putting the garden and uh BUSD pool in the faucet? Garden in the US pool. Okay, ask that question again. I want to make sure I understand it. I'm sorry. Yeah, did Forex say he was uh putting the garden and the BUSD pool on the uh, faucet? Yeah, I. I, I... I think the way that I'm interpreting your question is, and uh, and someone else, if you guys understand it differently, let me know. But I think the way I understand your question is, Forex Shark definitely wants to keep the Trip Garden and Trip separate from the Animal Farm. So there's a consideration to move. Um, 
to move the drip garden off of the animal farm UI and maybe put it on to the revised drip UI to kind of keep it separate. Is, is that answering your question? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Is that what you're asking? Okay. Did anybody else? Okay. Perfect. I just want to make sure I understood what you're asking. Okay. Crypto bag. You still there? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. And that did answer your question. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Wonderful. All right. So I'm cool with that. All right. So here's the other one too, that we kind of touched on Mike, but I want to get back to it because I think this is major because the concern has always been around utility. And there's an argument that um, the drip BUSD LP is or is not utility. And that's such a loose term nowadays. Like I don't even know what utility technically means outside of something we need to use it for. So there's an argument that um, the drip BUSD LP on the farm is utility per drip, but we need more. So he hinted around to Mike creating a new LP pair, right? A drip animal form dog and a drip animal form pig. And maybe that pays out in BUSD or some other form of a stable coin. Is, is that super bullish? Is that utility? What do we think about that? Let me get you back in here, Mike. All right. Wait, what, what did he say? He said drip, animal farm pig, and drip, animal farm dog. What does that mean? Yeah, like so it drip, seems like AFD, drip, a AFD. new linked pair. Yes. Yeah, he wants to create a new linked yes. pair. So a new, um, a new utility for drip. Instead of just being able to link drip with BUSD, and now in the future, you'd be able to link it with AFP as well as AFD to farm something else. You know, we, we don't know yet, but having the ability to pair drip with multiple coins is very bullish you know more things to do yeah more more, more things to do with your drip yeah i would think the same i would think if he's adding more pairs and adding drip to it then as long as it's uh as long as he's able to find a sustainable way to do it and maybe maybe even figure out a way to do the same thing that he did with the drip busd lp farm which is sending um some some drip to the faucet contract and buy more with the busd for the faucet but i don't know how he's gonna do it here with the afp and afd but if he's able to figure out a way to actually link some more drip going back to the faucet then it's a hundred percent bullish sure be, well because you know with any the one of these with any one of these lps there's going to be a tax and that tax yeah exactly what the entire platform runs off so the fact that he's going to have more tax to be able to pay out more profits for more reasons or more utility is definitely really good maybe uh pay pairing drip with afp will send some extra dividends to the pig pen or maybe the afd will send some extra dividends to the dog pound you know whatever it may be yeah. at least one percent of that will mo more than likely go back to the drip vault to maybe buybacks yeah. or something like that yeah, I mean, especially that he's locking more LPs into the farm as a drip LP is already mm -hmm. a good sign for, for the price appreciation and uh, afterwards. So it's bullish no matter what. Yeah, and mm -hmm. keep in mind that anytime you link one token with another token, you then merge their liquidity pools. And AFP and AFD, their liquidity is mostly based in BUSD. So Correct. just the fact that you're able to pair drip with those tokens that are based in BUSD is going to give drip more price stability. Yep. Three. Drip coach, point. did you hear that piece? Yeah. Yeah. I think uh I didn't hear it from this AMA, but I remember him uh in the last one when he was doing the Animal Farm AMA. Um I think the way I interpreted it was with the uh scratchy vaults. So having the partnership vaults because he's not going to add sell pressure any of his native tokens. He already said multiple times he's not going to create more tokens. And yeah. he's learned a lot from Drip. So in this regard, when he put those two pieces together, I think what he's saying is if he, if he paired Drip and Animal Farm Dogs or Drip and Animal Farm Pigs, it would actually pay out in one of the partnership vault tokens. Therefore, that can be sold. Same way with the cake being sold right now and potentially Stargate token uh, being sold in that 
allows for that to be injected back into whichever asset he wants to use. So I think uh, short term, it does add utility to answer your question about utility. But what people don't understand is that this doesn't actually do anything for the price. So everybody always throws out this idea that it's locking up drip tokens. Like I, I tried to stress that on my channel when I did the video about the drip BUSD farm. It doesn't mm -hmm. lock up anything. All it is actually doing is putting into another contract that people still have access to and can still sell. Yes, getting in and out, they get taxed. But the only way price appreciation happens is from the circulating supply on the DEX being sold. And then that creates the arbitrage on the pancake swap so that people see the actual price externally. So remember, our native DEX doesn't get shown anywhere, but that's where the actual price of drip is created. It's from the drip in BNB in that circulating supply. So if we want to see this pump long term or have some actual... Um, increase price appreciation there needs to be somehow um these drip that are being taken away from the faucet getting put back into the tax vault and an incentive to remove the drip from the swap page of the decks so just migrating drip from the faucet where people are claiming and then moving it over to the animal farm for staking uh does nothing but consider uh, actually cause more minting and no amount of taxes is going to offset that because, you know, 1% mm -hmm. in, 2% out, 2% in, 2%, it doesn't matter. It's not going to offset the amount of people migrating from the faucet. So I think um, the long term solution is actually whatever his layer two idea is going to be, where he can actually incentivize people to stop migrating drip to other places and put it back into the tax vault and replenish that and remove it from the circulating supply. That's where we'll see the actual price pump and um, maybe all-time highs again or something like that but all these other things are just kind of what i said band-aids on a bullet wound so uh <laughs> until that's in place it's it's going to kind of bleed out and that's it right so i want i want to dig into that one a little bit more so let's think about that so in short you're saying simply creating the uh no, let me back up a step so claiming from the faucet creating the busd drip lp pair and staking it into the farm. In short, your opinion, it doesn't have much implication on the price. Yes, no, it's, it's kind of stated. So it has given people an option not to sell, not to sell while they still earn yield. So, so that's a check. And you're saying, and I want to clarify this, and you're saying what really could potentially help price appreciate is not claiming at all somehow keeping the drip locked into the vault long term some incentive just to keep the drip there so people don't even want to claim is that what right. we're saying okay yeah because okay. that's that's exactly what he said he found yeah. out when the why he made animal farm dogs and pigs the way they did right he said people want to see price appreciation yeah. and so right now there is no price appreciation drip is down 99 percent even if you factor in yield um yeah. if you had to just hydrate it um every single day from all-time highs so yeah. there has to be some incentive to stop the minting of drip which increases increases the total supply and yeah. that would be keeping more drip in the tax vault so that that can be paid out but even more so um, like his lobby idea from Avarice or whatever he's going to potentially do with layer two is having people be like, yo, I want to buy drip today and take a gamble at staking it or uh, putting it into a wallet because I'm going to get paid out, you know, a percentage of that BNB &B from the lobby or rewards or however that lottery system will actually work. That's where we'll actually see price appreciation. Everything else just causes drip to just be moved to other staking contracts. That's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'll be curious. Mo. Yes. Or Mike, do you guys have any thoughts on that? Because there, there's always been cyborg conversation about utility. Because like I said before, it's a loose term in crypto. Mm -hmm. And uh, some would consider the fact that you can stake your uh, trip tokens and earn yield, that that's a, that's a use case, right? And I, I would probably agree that that is definitely a use case. But then the argument is, as long as there's utility, then at some point you should see some form of price appreciation. So listening to what Drip Coach said, do you have an opinion either way on how you view uh, Drip being used in the animal farm and whether or not it has implications on the price? Well, for me, initially I thought that, well, I mean, he, he just taught me something new. 
Initially, yeah. I thought that once the LPs were deposited into the farm, then they're technically being locked up in a way that's going to help sustain some kind of price stability. Yeah. Um, if that's not the case, then yeah, I mean, we need to find some other form of utility. Mm -hmm. well, price price stability is different from price appreciation. Mm -hmm. You know, price appreciation is just going to come from uh, circulating supply and liquidity. Now, price stability. Like for instance, all these people, all these people um, pairing drip with BUSD, it doesn't necessarily bring up the price, but it does stabilize it just a little bit. And I mm -hmm. think the same could be expected from pairing it with the farm tokens. But I guess we'd have to wait until it actually plays out to to see what real effect it may have. But the game theory would be positive if you have more something more to do with your drip tokens now when you pair them and you put them in the farm they're not locked you know you can very easily just unstake them all and just sell right. all of them if you really wanted to so it would if anything give you something else to use your drip on that you can earn yield now yeah. i think one of the biggest benefits would be what token are you earning in that yield are you earning drip? Are you earning pigs? Are you earning BUSD? What can you do with that yield that you are earning? Yeah. You know, would you put it back into the faucet? Would you put it back into the farm? You know, we'd have to see how that cycle, you know, that wheel really turn to really see, cause there's, a, you know, there's a hundred different ways you can do it. So I'm yeah. very interested to see what he has in mind, but I think, you know, having the ability to pair drip with other tokens overall would lead to some sort of price stability but not necessarily price appreciation you know the yeah. appreciation is only going to come from the amount of liquidity and the overall circulating supply you know those two things are the major players in mutual price yeah and, and that's a good distinction it really is mike i mean that's that's worth repeating right because you're saying there's price stability and then there's price appreciation. Ideally, it'd be nice to have both, but you can't really have both, right? So you're typically stabilizing the price in some cases, and then you're creating some other form of utility that generates momentum for price appreciation. And I don't think we think about it in those terms. Uh, so that's a good way to kind of distinguish it. So the form, and I don't want to generalize anything, right? But the form seems like the fact that you can then stake your trip BUSD it's more or less more or less stabilizing the price, right? Because we haven't really sold it. So we're stabilizing the price while at the same time kind of earning yield, right? And then that allows Forex time to then come up with incremental development that creates incremental utility, which in theory should create price appreciation. And, and that's what I want to get back to is like, and I'm gonna do a video series on this as well. I think right now, what's really important is that we do stabilize the price. Like that should be our highest priority is get to a floor and mitigate all of this selling pressure for whatever reason. Once yeah. we get there, and I think the community by itself could potentially stabilize it because we've seen it again, right? Once we got the FOMO, fresh capital, or at least capital sitting on the sidelines came into the ecosystem and got us back to two bucks. So there's money out there to like stabilize the price and the community can do it for a number of months until the incremental utility comes out. Yeah, and that, then we can focus on appreciating. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a great that's a great way to put it. I mean, if you think about it in a in a larger perspective the the way the sorry the the main reason forex actually wanted to do the animal farm i think one of the main reasons is to actually find something to do with drip that's going to incentivize a lot of people to keep it within the ecosystem right so yeah. um in the long term if more people keep their drip lps in the ecosystem it might not help the appreciation but it might help sustaining that price and this all goes back at the end of the day. If the price keeps going down, let's say we go sub $1, then at that point, it's gonna take a lot of, you know, convincing to the community or even new investors to actually put in money behind it 
because at that mm-hmm. point it's going to be pennies you know yeah. like it's not going to be something that's that that's going to have any kind of incentive yeah because when you pull up the chart it's not very attractive if that's yeah exactly and i know yeah. i don't once um i was in uh, one of uh, bar towns um uh, ciphers these ciphers and he said you know there's some kind of discussion going on in the background because everybody knows that the chart is trending downwards and uh, there's a lot of talk about different things that they can try out to help boost momentum and boost the price up just because it doesn't look you know it doesn't look good as yeah. as, as some as new investors are looking at the chart it doesn't look good so yeah uh, if there's a way to stabilize the price it's like you said it's the the first priority before thinking of actually going back up in price correct Correct. Your coach, I saw you unmuted. Do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I remember um, uh, what Mo just said as well. Um, I was one of the DJ Cyphers, and that's what Ray was talking about is finding this drip stable coin. The, uh, the only issue is I don't know at what place we'll find that because the, the math that people forget is that for basically every one drip you put in after taxes, you can basically pull out 2.6% or 2, 2.6x of your principal, right? So every person is able to take out two and a half more than what they put in. And at these prices, it's very easy for people to create these max wallets with very little capital, um, even want to be well for something out there. So that's, that's a bullish thing for people with money, right? Because mm-hmm. they can definitely get that out before any more negative price appreciation happens. But that's why I said this is a Band-Aid over a bullet wound because it's actually <laughs> now we need, a, we need a tourniquet. We've actually chopped off one of our arms. So yeah. if nothing's put in place <laughs> in the short term, mm-hmm. you yeah. get more and more people creating these max wallets and then they don't really care about migrating capital or staking it because they're in such a positive that they can afford to sell off, you know, 1,000 drip, 2,000 drip a day or whatever the case may be and still have the other max wallets that they're feeding. So that's, again, it's a um, um, a feature, not a bug of the system to be able to create multiple wallets. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but we do need something in place in the short to near term that yeah. can offset all of this. And yes, creating the pairs can have people not sell it and actually move it, which does stabilize the price. But like I'm saying, at, at what price does that become stable? Is it a dollar? Is it 50 cents? Is yeah. it 10 cents? You know, where does that come? Yeah, definitely. And is fixed. Yeah, so then uh, what timeline did he give for that? I didn't hear any timeline, I don't know. Yeah, and, and, that, and so, so good, because that was a setup question. Because again, on these, Twitter spaces, we need to be very transparent with our audience. At least that's how I want to approach it. Yeah. And um, when there's there's news to celebrate, we'll do that. If there's a uh, reason for a concern, we'll talk about it and try to address it and come up with stalls. But um, I just wanted to set that question up because it's important. Yeah. Time that's is actually of the right. essence, right? That, that, yeah. That, Time is the of the essence. And we did not get a clear date. Yeah. Yeah. That's the double-edged sword for me. Why I can't, I, I the teeter back and forth. So like you yeah. said, he didn't give a date. And on the one hand, I see this as like an imminent problem. But at the same time, I listen to Forex and he doesn't seem phased at all. And I'm like, well, then since he's not worried, then I guess I have nothing to worry about. And I keep going right. back and forth. And I'm like, right. I don't really get how I'm supposed to feel because like I look at the numbers and I'm like, this is horrible. And he's like, no, yeah. no nothing to worry about. Everything's fine. You know, I'll build it when I'm ready. So Yeah. <laughs> So no, and Jupiter Coach, like it is double, it is a double edged sword because to your point, think about it. I would imagine that most of the people that are joining these Twitter spaces week after week, and I want to thank you guys again for being patient and and contributing with your time. I think we're dialed in and we're committed to it. So for us, we can listen to an AMA and lock in and say that's all I needed for me to um, verify and continue and dca or compound whatever your choice is i'm locked in i'm going to ride until the wheels fall off the bus that's fine for us but for some other people who have not been in there as long and less committed it could be a concern that there is no clear roadmap and uh i just want to bring that up right so we just can't blindly keep saying to people no you got to trust the guy and and uh, he's going to deliver it and they're like i don't have six months to a year you know, I, I need to know 
something shorter term or at least give me a vague idea of a roadmap and when something's going to be launched and then I can lock in and know that my funds are safe. But when there's ambiguity, right? When there's no transparency, what do people do? They naturally fear and have uncertainty and doubt. So we're always in this constant tug of war and we're just freaking treading water, right? Yeah. At the same time, we don't want to rush the process, but here's what I want to say. And I thought about it more, I'll let you jump in. <laughs> and you guys are probably just like, Kryptonite, you can't say stuff like that. That's okay, it's, it's my Twitter space. I say whatever the hell I want to say. <laughs> so here's what I'm saying, and I don't know it enough, because I'm not in software development. I don't do any of that, I build homes. And I would tell you in my industry, there is always lags because there's always things that take place, especially when we tear down walls and we've got to bring plumbing and electric up to code. There's always the, always these timelines, but you know what I do? I constantly provide an update, right? I reset expectations, but there's a date associated with it. I just can't go to my clients and say, yeah, we ran into the snag. I know I told you January will be done. And then their follow up question is going to be, all right, cool. That's fine. Thanks for bringing it to our attention, Kryptonite. So uh, January now, what's the new timeline? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you mean. Yeah, but yeah, that's not going to fly. So yeah, I'm saying, is it OK in this space? And it probably is. I just don't know. So he's he's in a position where he said multiple times and showed it in multiple different ways how he's going to launch a product and just failed to accomplish that. So he doesn't want to be in that same position every single time that he wants to launch a brand new product, right? And this is why he's mentioned today. He's like, we have to figure out a better way to organize our launches. And we're not going to say anything until we have something developed. Yes. And he's saying this with such confidence that just like Dripcore said, I don't know if I should feel, uh, you know, amazing about the way that he's he's uh, he's uh, discussing these these projects or I should have some kind of some kind of, you know, of like I need to consider it before I need to actually put in my my money. Right. Yes. And that's what a lot of people are going to end up doing. They're just going to wait because if they don't have a date and they don't even like they, he, he said it also, he said there is a like on the wiki, for example, there is like a, a time a timeline. There's yeah, no specific yeah. dates to them. So people might be like, okay, I'm going to circle back in three months and I'll see where things are. But for now, I'm not going to yeah. put in my money. I'm going to leave yeah. everything in my wallet, right? So mm -hmm. it doesn't help. But also, he doesn't want to be in a position where he's going to screw up his reputation even more. So yeah. there's that fine line that he has to figure out with his brand new team and see where he can maximize um, his communication efforts. Mm-hmm. So, I hope so the project manager is in charge of the dates. I think that would be. And sorry, I've been off, guys. I'm yeah. working on my mic. But I did want to, and I'm so sorry, but one of the things that nobody mentioned for utility is free advertising for Drip on the animal farm. Every new LP, including the BUSD uh, pool, is advertising for Drip. And it will be significantly easier to onboard people into uh, drip or into animal farm that it will be for drip mm -hmm. and if they see it honestly the more buy pressure from people to create lps right on the animal farm like through the liberation without actually receiving the dividends from the or the uh compounding from the faucet the better like we want more people to buy that drip as physically possible without getting the same returns as we yeah. all get in the faucet. Good point, Rocky. That's a good point. And you think clearly they're gonna build some type of, uh, but they said they're gonna keep it as two separate entity, two separate products. Do you think there'll be some type of bridge link from the animal farm? Or would there be some video? We're just kind of speculating. Some I'm video. honestly not sure yeah. we need it because okay. of the sheer number of people that actually discuss it online. And then they'll go. be they'll be pushed towards the wiki links. And so anybody that actually does their own research will be able to find it without having to try too hard. The people that just buy it from Drip Liberation and then stake it right onto uh, the animal farm, fantastic, because we do get buybacks from that uh, pool, whether it's 1% or 2% coming in and out. 
uh, we've seen that that actually helped fill up our tax vault. And so as it continues, it's only going to get better. And and uh, Forex talked about the fact that this continual pool of buybacks without limit. And then I think Barter Towns talked about the fact that it it literally encompasses the community sentiment of who's putting money in and out of that. Yeah. It can only be good long term for us. And if it, if the same mechanics were put into the two other LPs that involve drip, all yeah. the better. Totally. Good stuff, Rocky. I totally agree. I totally agree. So let's do this. So basically, as it relates to the dates, overall, we have to be comfortable with the fact that he is not going to release a date unless it's 100% ready to go, test it, and audit it. Folks are just going to have to get comfortable with that. I mean, that's basically I, what we're I like that better yeah. than telling me we're going to launch January 1st and then we're going to end up launching April 1st. Just because <laughs> people are going to get too excited. They're going to get hyped up. They're going to make videos. They're going to make a bunch of like assumptions around the fact that we're launching January 1st. Yeah. And then they're going to, just like we did for the first um, first uh, wave of marketing just now before the Animal Farm, everything was tailored towards October 18th. And then we missed that. And then we missed another one. And then we ended mm -hmm. up launching November 1st. So we, we lost a bunch of investors right there just because everybody was expecting one day and yeah. they got it two, three weeks later. So for yeah. me, waiting until you're ready and launching on time is a hundred times better than just giving me random dates and never launching on time. It's just going to make me lose faith uh, at the end of the day. Gotcha. All right. So that just puts a little more pressure on the influencers, you know, to kind of ready to ship, which I think uh, will be fine for us because we are committed. And this is what I like it works. I agree. I agree. And this is what I like about um, some of the folks that are out on the call. And Gary, I'll let you jump in. We've got Rock Ape, who does an exceptional job of creating shorts and providing content that matters. Then we've got Mike, who's out there speaking to anyone who's got an ear and telling them about the drip ecosystem. Then Mo has ramped up his YouTube videos where he's putting out content four or five days specifically on trip and the animal farm. And then you've got trip coach who does a really good job of putting together like some very technical information, but providing context and clarity so that you can use the data and make informed decisions about investing. So there's a ton of people in the space that are committed to educating the broader audience on the trip ecosystem so that you can be comfortable when you have a leader, a developer like Forex Shark that says, hey, look, I'm not going to be releasing any dates until it's 100% ready to go, test it and audit it. And you can say, fine, the community is behind him 1000%. So I'm going to trust him even more. Right. So that's why we're saying maybe be comfortable with something, a blanket statement like that. There's too many great people in this space for you guys to be uncertain at this point. All right. Yeah, I, I, I love that. Actually, just before Gary jumps in, uh, I just wanted to mention a lot of people uh, nowadays, they they don't want to do or sorry, they can't or whatever the case might be. They don't do enough research on certain projects. Right. So the fact that there are a bunch of YouTubers and these Twitter spaces and people on Twitter just uh, explaining the concepts that might be that might not be uh, expressed publicly clearly, but us we explain it in a more um, clear and broad sense for new new investors. Uh, it just makes things a lot easier. So whoever um, Kryptonite just mentioned, actually you guys should follow these guys because everybody has their specific you know, a uh, trait that makes them special in releasing videos or, or tweets or whatever the case might be. So you're going to find some value uh, in anything that comes out of these guys. Totally agree. There's another value that we haven't touched on. Like Forex talked about the fact that the community needs to leverage that social currency 
Yeah. But I think uh, somebody in our group has done a fantastic job u- using uh, the YouTube system with the, uh, what is it, the join membership and creating that mega live or mega lottery. That is one of those social currencies that's being leveraged. And it puts fresh capital that wouldn't necessarily be in the ecosystem. And it, it has it just like uh, we saw DeFi proof doing with uh, with the NFTs. Yes. Uh, and I think as we figure as the community figures out their way of uh, of supporting the project that they're in uh, far more than anybody ever would in a traditional investment, uh, it's going to get very interesting in this space. I, I think we're just at the beginning of this. I agree. And it's going to grow exponentially. That's what that's what I love about the community is that there's so many brilliant people, extremely creative, and they're willing to share their insights and more importantly, their time, you know, just providing this content, man. And uh, it, it really just shortens an individual's learning curve uh, because when we got into the space and I'll speak for my example, there was maybe just a handful of influencers that I followed and literally just a handful. And now there's so many different perspectives because of the drip ecosystem and how much we trust the developer and how solid the community is. So it's so easy for you to get plugged in and shorten that learning curve. All right. So that's why Twitter spaces is important. Everybody on the call that has a YouTube channel or some other social media platform, I encourage you guys to most point and rock case point, follow them. We've got uh, crypto Mark on there, who is a brilliant artist. There's just so many ways to get tapped in and leverage the resources to really trust the protocol long-term. All right. So let's do this. Let me give, uh, the speakers like Todd, he's always on here and I may put him on the spot. Uh, cause he sent me a tweet. <laughs> hey, Hey Todd, if you are listening, cause I can see you and there's something you want to say, I'm going to give you a few moments to request as a speaker, cause I would love to hear from you. All right. And it's about 623. I try to keep them between, uh, 60. <laughs> he gave me the thumbs down. Todd, that's hilarious. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you got shut yeah, down. It is it is tough to get on here and, and be heard, but we're going to encourage you to do it one day. All right, it's uh, I like to keep it between 60 and 90 minutes, so we're close to uh, 90 minutes. Is there anything else that you guys took away from the AMA that we have not mentioned and uh, you want to bring up while we've got everybody here? I just wanted to point out that, you know, the more you listen to Forex, the more you feel like the guy is so in control of his emotions. And the fact that he hasn't crumbled so far and he hasn't just given up on the project <laughs> after going from all time highs to, to like two dollars or a dollar fifty. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I give him props, man. Like the guy, he knows what he's offering and he's going to do it organically and make sure that he's going to succeed long term. Um, and just the fact that we have such a good community backing him and, uh, you know, supporting him in the rights and wrongs, I feel like, um, it's going to be something very good for 2023. Mm-hmm. I agree. Emphasis on the word 2023. All right. Yeah. He yeah. knows exactly what he's doing. He does. Yeah. I can I echo that as well. That's actually one of the reasons I still continue to support this and whatnot is because after doing my research, reading into his discord, going back six years, looking at his chats and his thread and all that stuff, um, it just showed that he, yeah, he is here to stay and actually try to do something positive in the space and uh, leave no token left behind. So all of his old projects, he's found a way to add utility. So even though we're seeing drip, just like I said, bleed out, you know, it's in the ICU right now, but he doesn't (laughs) seem phased. So it's like, yeah, I'll bring it back when I'm ready to bring it back. So I guess that's what keeps me hopeful, cautiously optimistic, I like to say. So yeah, he's he's proven it before. So I think he'll continue to do it again. Just not a matter of if, but when. Yeah, I think there it is. It's not if. It's in the ICU, hold up. Come on. <laughs> you just, Jared, you just, not, not in the you ICU. Get, you okay. got to get to where you're having a thousand a day and then you won't worry about it. 
There you go. There you <laughs> yeah, go. if I had got in a year ago when all those other people did, yeah, you're right. But for those that got in this year, that's ICU, brother. It's below uh, below what the um, launching price was. Mm-hmm. What <laughs> was the launch price? Discount. It was two something, right? Two twenty five. Three three dollars. Two fifty to three dollars. Okay. <laughs> we just broke one forty. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Let's see here, Mike. If you're still there, is there any parting words for the group before we? Oh, can Gary say his one thing he was going to say? I'm sorry. Yeah, who was that? Gary. Gary? Yes, sir. I'm a community member. I've been there since February. I, I got close to 4,000 drip. I got 13 wallets. I comment a lot. I'm in a lot of groups. And during all this time, all this late stuff, it's really not as much concern for the core maximalists, the, the bar town people, the, uh, you know, the crypto winner's circle. The guys who've been there a long time, they're going to eat that because it works. You know, if you go to the best restaurant in town, you might wait two hours. You might not get the the speediest service, but the steak's going to be delicious. <laughs> it's going to be well worth the wait. I, I love that. <laughs> yeah, and I I like mean, that. You, you guys have a different perspective when you're all talking about timeline, timeline, because it's on you to echo what he says. Yeah. And it kind of makes you look like an ass. Well, this guy, well, he just said, that's, that's all we got. Well, I mean, what else are we supposed to tell these people? Yeah. But yeah, but you gotta remember, like it's done good gosh, just bought so much stuff, retired so many people, built the wells in Cambodia, South African orf- orphanage, just done all these wonderful things. And it's gonna continue to. So even if we have to wait a little bit, what's what's a month? What's a year? What's two years? And with this kind of gains that people are making, it's ridiculous. Yeah. And you're right, it is about perspective. It really is, because if you think about the timeline because it feels like everyone this is the first anxious we use the word and patient and that's not fair to people i think everyone is anxious because we do understand how powerful the trip ecosystem really is and people just want to see the fruits of their labor now when you think about it that is a long-term perspective. And that's when we deal in, in years, you know, versus weeks and months, we're talking about years. And for a lot of people, probably it's been 12 months that you've been in drip and uh, we're already trying to accelerate the process. People think about how they uh, invest it with either a 401k or stocks for that matter. I don't believe the large majority of people are in and out of the loop every day or every week. Typically, Drip Coach, can you hear me at all? Ah, now I can hear you. you disappeared Man, in about three minutes. That's what I thought. That's crazy. That must. All right. So you didn't hear my ending at all, did you? <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. I was checking the chat to see if anybody else had posted anything in the thread. Yeah. I was like, maybe I'm the only one that fell out. No, I'm not sure what happened. So let's do this. Let's get everybody on there. Cause, uh, all right, let's try this one more time. Can you guys yeah, hear me? Yeah, now okay? we can hear. Let's change. Man, that's for a minute. I could not hear anything. Yeah. That sucks. And it sounds like it was for a while. Okay. So here's what I was trying to do because it was getting close to the 90 minute mark. I wanted to give everybody an opportunity to kind of close out with our party thoughts and we'll go ahead and wrap it up. So if there was anything else you guys wanted to say to the listeners, we could do that. Too. So so I, I just wanted to add uh, real quick that the, the speculation and the uncertainty in any investment adds a value to it. You know, imagine that the founder of Apple came to you, you know, and said, Hey man, yeah, I have this idea for this box with a screen in it and it kind of works like a calculator and you can do all these things on it. You know, there's some people that are going to be like, what? That, that's, that'll never take off. And then there's going to be other people <laughs> right. that'll be like, huh? Okay. You know, tell me more. What do you know about this? And you know, he may not know much about when exactly things are going to happen. He may not know where he's going to get his computer chips from. He may not know any of these things, but if you get in before he does know all of those things, you know, before he does have his whole assembly line in order, before he does buy a factory, that is where the greatest opportunity, in my opinion, comes from. Before all of these things are set and done, 
before you know all the farms that forks wants to do before all the scratchies before everything you know mm -hmm. and it is speculative and we don't know when that's going to happen but yes if you get in right now not knowing any of those things and he does pull it off which i believe he will the the chance for exponential wealth is enough to keep me interested. It's enough to keep me there to see this guy really pull it off, you know, because um, thinking that he will accomplish all of these things. I mean, there's a there's a very, very bright future for Drip and the Animal Farm, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's that's my opinion in general is the speculation kind of adds a value to me. I like that things are kind of uncertain right now you know because if everything was certain and if everything was just you know a drop in the bucket oh okay then everybody would be investing in this you know but the fact yeah, that the totally. price is low right now gives people the opportunity to get in i mean below the ground floor you know ground floor was three dollars <laughs> or four dollars so we're below the ground floor right now so it's just a greater opportunity in my opinion that's a good way to look at it that's a great way to look at it. I love that, Mike. Mm -hmm. Mo, did you want to add anything? I'm honestly good. I said all I had to say. I'm, I'm just looking forward for the next couple of weeks. I like what has been done today. And if possible for Forex to do this weekly, then it's just going to give us some more insight into what the new three to four member dev team is working on and, and what we can expect for the next weeks uh headed towards christmas and the new year um yeah. so anyways like i i'm i'm feeling good about what happened today and i'm looking forward for what's what's to come if anybody has any questions you can ask any of us and would be happy to you know guide you through the whole thing that's good thanks mo trip coach no is there anything else you want to add on the way out nah that's it i'm i'm good i'm rocking uh rocking with forex you know one way or the other rich or wrecked tell the cows come <laughs> home or sink or swim whatever it is whatever analogy you prefer yeah i'm sticking with it and see how it goes from a content perspective as well as a speculative investor as well thanks Sounds for having good. Me. man my pleasure and i appreciate you uh spending time with us and providing your insight and education and again guys the emphasis uh drip coach and mo and mike any social media platform that they're on a really good idea to subscribe to their channel and follow them. It's really important. Smart people, entertaining, has a really good grasp on the concepts and the mechanics. So don't waste your time. Shorten that learning curve. All right. So let's say this. We'll wrap up. I want everyone to have a very safe holiday. Enjoy your time with your family and friends. And in the meantime, I wish you guys peace and prosperity. Until then, stay hydrated, everyone. Take care. Have a good night. See you guys. See you.